Hello everyone, in this video I am going to talk about the various tests for coagulation like PT, INR and APTT. Most of the time when we see those uh, this test, you know, we get confused because uh, as a gynecologist, it is actually not easy to remember all the pathophysiology behind this test. So what I have done, is I have just, you know, uh, made it easy right so let's start with the pathophysiology of coagulation in very simple way first of all the goal of coagulation pathway is to make the fibrin and fibrin will do what fibrin will just incorporate the platelets inside the inside it it will make a mesh and the clot will be formed why we, we why we need to make the clot because we need hemostasis that's okay for you now the goal of coagulation pathways is to make fibrin now fibrin is made from the fibrinogen but who makes the fibrinogen into fibrin thrombin is the thing is very important thing which actually converts fibrinogen into fibrin now this is a activation cascade that means one factor gets activated it in turn activates another one and that another one in turns activates the other one right so this is how the pathway goes on so the thrombin is the thing which is going to convert fibrinogen into fibrin right so now the goal of coagulation pathway is to is to generate thrombin thrombin is nothing but an activated form of prothrombin so the goal of pathways is what generation of activated thrombin right now this goal can be achieved by two types of pathway the first one is intrinsic pathway and the another one is extrinsic pathway what will happen in extrinsic pathway extrinsic pathway is triggered by the external factors like trauma tissue uh, tissue releases when there is a trauma you know tissue factor will be released inside the blood and it will be exposed at that time extrinsic pathway will activate and to activate the extrinsic pathway the first factor will be factor number seven factor number seven will be activated and this factor number seven will directly with the help of factor five activate factor 10 and that factor 10 which in turn going to activate thrombin right so extrinsic pathway which factors are involved factor 7 factor 5 factor 10 thrombin now the another pathway is intrinsic pathway intrinsic pathway uh, activated via intrinsic factors for example infection if you have an infection in the response to the infection your body will activate your intrinsic pathway by itself so <clears throat> it is done with the help of uh, activation of factor 12 then the 12 will convert the factor 11 then 11 will, will convert the factor 9 and the ninth factor will convert again <clears throat> or activate factor 10 so again I am what I am talking to you is both of this pathway will converge at the level of factor 10 and this activated factor 10 will convert prothrombin into thrombin then thrombin is going to convert fibrinogen into fibrin that's it it's very simple right now what is pt apt and inr pt is a measurement of prothrombin time right it means that the time taken by the blood to form a clot after it is exposed to the tissue 
right so what it measures it measures extrinsic pathway plus common pathway combinedly and the coagulation factors that are associated with extrinsic pathway and common pathways are factor 10 7 5 prothrombin and fibrinogen right what happens into the lab when you give sample for pt it's very important if you understand this thing then there will be no problem in understanding the uh, PT and APTT, right? The blood is taken from the vein and it is taken into a special vial called citrate vial. This citrate vial is looks like this, right? Is a universal color for that vial, okay? It is a bluish color. Now, this citrate vial contains sodium citrate 3.2 percent, so it it chelates the calcium and calcium is a very important for all the factors of coagulation so once the citrate is added into the blood the calcium is chelated then the coagulation will not happen all the factors will stay uh, as it is okay it will not activate it right so the calcium uh, will be chelated now this blood is going to into the laboratory okay so what are those factors they dependent on the vitamin k and calcium uh, factor 2 7 factor 9 and factor 10 right now now this blood reaches to the lab it is kept at 37 body temperature at a centrifuge the plasma is separated plasma taken out excess calcium is added so so the effect is now reversed okay when you add the calcium in extra amount it will just reverse its effect now the tissue factor is also added once you add the tissue factor then the coagulation will start then the time is measured when the clot is seen visibly right visual inspection is there so it will take i think 12 to 13 second time it is which is a normal time right now ratio is what ratio is we are comparing the pt of a test uh, to a pt of a normal person right so it is uh, it is to standardize the lab work nothing else so uh, what we will do the inr ratio in inr ratio there will be the ratio of pt of the test sample then the pt of the control sample okay it should be less than 1.1 if it is more than 1.1 that means coagulation is not enough or sometimes warfarin kind of drugs which are blood thinners basically which inhibit vitamin k and then uh, all this uh, thing will lead to what delay in the extrinsic and common pathway and that's why the pt and inr will be increased in these kind of cases right now the second thing is aptt what is aptt it is activated prothrombin time activated prothrombin time it tests what it tests intrinsic pathway and common pathway so the pt was testing extrinsic pathway but aptt is testing intrinsic pathway that's it now what are the factors that are associated with the intrinsic pathway factor 12 11 9 10 factor 8 prothrombin fibrinogens all these factors are tested now how the test is done again the same thing taken the blood in the citrate vial and the citrate vial comes into the lab centrifuged plasma is separated now we need to activate the intrinsic pathway if you need to activate the intrinsic pathway you need some substances like silica and kaolin once you add silica and kaolin it will activate the intrinsic pathway and then we will see in how much time the blood clot is formed <coughs> right so pt measures the extrinsic and common apt measures the intrinsic and common pathway now if you have only pt is increased that means the extrinsic pathway is in problem and then there will be there will be factor deficiency of the factor 7 tissue factor will be considered if you have only aptt is increased that means you have the certain factors are deficient like like what like factor um, like factor 12 11 
nine okay and hemophilia in which these factors are not generated in an amount appetite will be increased now if both are increased that means we know that that something is going to be problem with common uh, pathways like uh, like the thrombin activation so this is how you interpret the results of pt and hepatitis both i think it's enough thank you friends